Okay. Um, saw some very interesting things here about making fuel on Mars, and that brings up the notion that we might be able to make a reusable, refuelable landing boat of some kind to travel between the surface and orbit back and forth. And that brings up how do you protect it during entry on the descent? That's what my paper's about. Now, I'm going to talk about reusable ceramic heat shields, possibly using these things at Mars, but I'm really going to tell you about an experimental material that was inspired by shuttle tile, believe it or not. Let's see if I can make this work. Well, that didn't go, did it? There, okay. Put my credentials up there just for a moment, just to let you know I really do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, let's not spend a lot of time on that. Long time ago, when I was working in the aerospace defense industry, I had a little ramjet device that I had to insulate in a way where I didn't have to re-insulate it for every test. And I was inspired by NASA shuttle tile. I made a kind of a homemade commercial materials version of their tile. And I always wondered if I could make a heat shield out of it for entry purposes, but I never did get around to that. And that was three decades ago that I did this. I did have to experiment with the material a little bit because my homemade copy of the tile was too fragile for my application. And what I came up with did the same job, but was tough as an old boot. And I've always wondered whether it was useful. Now last year, I got to play in with some space plane reentry studies and I got to play in with some manned lander, some of this reusable lander stuff, just kind of looking at feasibility with a simplified entry ballistics code and some other simplified analysis like that, just to get in the ballpark. And I decided to reanalyze that old insulation material to see if it might be suitable. I did that earlier this year. And I figured out how to make large panels with this stuff and retain them with more than just a bond. And I did that this year. And I did verify that the ancient materials I used three decades ago are still available, although you have to ask for them by name now. Okay, this is the little tool that I did three decades ago. This guy here is a little boilerplate, heavyweight, ramjet tool. Uh, this engine right here is about the size of a coffee cup. Uh, these over here are the tools I used to mold the insulator. Uh, it was part of a larger system, the details of which are not even germane here. This is the insulator, the second one that I made. The first one, the first time I drove that little ramjet into rich instability, that insulator shattered and it just spit it out on the ground and lit a grass fire. So I thought back to what me and my dad had done making fiberglass canoes and I went and got some fire curtain cloth and I made a ceramic, ceramic composite material with this stuff. And this is it. This is the ramjet liner right here. This thing is about three inches long and it's about an inch and a half inside diameter. It's real small. It's about two tenths of an inch thick. And it did just about the same kind of a low conductivity insulation job that shuttle tile does. I even made the nozzle out of the same material over here. And what you're looking at there is a liner that went into perhaps half a hundred to a hundred rich instability blowout problems, several dozen tests, and I accumulated more than five hours of burn on that thing. And this is what it looked like when it came out. It looked like that when it went in there. Now, I reanalyzed the stuff. I didn't ever dare characterize that material at all. I put it in that device. It, it, uh, it functioned. It did its job. I didn't worry about the details at that time. So I went back here last year, and this is the thermal gradient information right here. I'm going from just over the boiling point of water to uh, ramjet flame temperatures. Look at those temperatures right in there. That's full rich fuel air combustion going on in there. That's quite a gradient across two tenths of an inch or about five millimeters. Um, 
I didn't get a density on it, but uh, sensibly it was about like the, the medium range to high range commercial styrofoam materials. I was able to reanalyze the thermal conductivity that's extraordinarily cold, low. Um, this is about the nature of the rich instability pounding that it took would be uh, the best part of an atmosphere plus and minus at about 300 hertz. That's what rich instability was like in this bird. And uh, as I said, the materials were all commercial. Whoop. There, here we go. Back to where we were. I used Julian Allen's old very simple entry analysis for this. And rather than, than uh, drag this out, uh, those of you that, uh, that might be familiar with entry, they came up with this for Warhead reentry back in the early 50s, and by the early 60s, he was able to publish because it became declassified. I remember seeing this in graduate school. So I finally found a source for it, dug it out, got it working, put it in a spreadsheet where I could use it. The stagnation heat balance with a material like this with the conduction path cut off is simple re-radiation. It's the same idea they were going to use on the X-20 dinosaur a long time ago, except that wasn't low conductivity. This is. All you have to do is figure out the skin temperature to get the energy that you acquire radiated back out into space. I looked at a space plane to see if I could do this, use this material here at Earth, and once I had it kind of doped out, Pretty well, anywhere you could use shuttle tile on an airframe, you could use this stuff. And the question was, could I use it at the stagnation point where we couldn't use shuttle tile before? And there's a very restricted class of very low ballistic coefficient, very blunt heat shields that might work here. Mars is an easier problem, and you don't need to worry about ablatives at the stagnation point. Uh, that's the data that I used. Anybody that wants to look this up in the presentation can. That's for the Earth entry. Here's the, just I used a, one of my Mars lander studies to, uh, as just, just a tool to find out what, what this stuff would do at Mars. And that's a fairly high ballistic coefficient right there. That's, that's quite a bit larger than any of the probes we've sent so far. And we're talking about a 60 metric ton craft here. This is a manned lander. And if you want, you can look it up. Here's the conditions I looked at. I looked at uh, entry from low Mars orbit. This would be, the, whoop, hit the wrong button here. Here's the entry interface speed. It's real shallow. Uh, it's a real low heating rate at stagnation. Uh, if you're doing direct entry from an interplanetary trajectory, uh, the speed is a little higher. I assume the same shallow entry, same spacecraft. I got a little bit higher heating. And uh, for the Earth orbit bird, I had to get that down to 25 watts per square centimeter to make the material feasible at stagnation. Here, here it's not a problem. Now here's the results. This right here is the temperature limit. This is temperature, and this is how much heat you're putting in at the stagnation zone. Between the red curve and the green curve, if you fall in there, you get to use it one time. I got to use it several times in the ramjet, but for a heat shield, you don't want shrinkage cracking due to solid phase change problems. It'll shrink on you and crack, and you really don't want cracks in a heat shield. I could tolerate that in my little ramjet. Can't do this. If you're in this region of here above the green, you get destroyed. And down below, you're reusable. How many times do you want to fly? That's a real valid question. How many times do you want to fly this? A hundred times? A thousand times? Ten thousand times? This is what I got. The blue curve is what I got. Now here's the, this is from low Mars orbit. I'm, I'm lots of margin here. This is from the direct interplanetary transfer at 5.6 kilometers a second at Mars. 
And this is at restricted glass of space planes from low Earth orbit right here. It's very marginal. I will say this. With an average emissivity of 0.8, that's a black surface, not the white one that I had. That's a black surface, and that has to be spectrally averaged, by the way. This is what it looks like with the material as I tested it three decades ago. The graph has the same meaning. It won't work at Earth. I get to use it one time from a direct entry into Mars. It's okay from low Mars orbit, even without the black surface. This is an average emissivity of 0.2, and that's pretty close to the results we had for this stuff when we tested it three decades ago. So these are reasonably realistic guesses that I was using in my analysis. There's a little summary chart right there. Like I said, the, the real application for this stuff, if you want to skip ablatives at stagnation zones, the real application is Mars, not Earth. Uh, for the white stuff, as long as you restrict yourself to low Mars orbit, you're okay. Otherwise, you're going to need the black, uh, you're going to need the black surface. You could do Mars direct with that. This is how you make a big heat shield panel. Now this material that I made is a, is a, is a low density ceramic potting compound. It's available commercially. And you cure it in an oven at about 102 degrees centigrade, Celsius for you young guys. Um, you have to put a surface sealing coating on it. So I had the potting compound and I had the uh, basically a ceramic cement that I used for a hard surface sealant. They're both aluminosilicate materials. And then you got the layers of fire curtain cloth in here. And because I wasn't a contained geometry for entry, I had to start worrying about how am I going to keep this stuff on the outside of a convex curve? Well, you put it on a back plate that's going to be part of the spacecraft shell. And you can just bolt to the framing. And where the fabric gets around the end of the around the end of the panel, you just clamp it off. Now you can bond and you can clamp to retain and you've got redundant retention that way. That's something shuttle didn't have. And like I said, this stuff's tough as an old boot. About the only thing you'd ever see on a landing boat on Mars might be gravel damage from rocket backblast when you're landing and taking off. You're going to get some dings and a heat shield. I think this stuff's pretty easy to patch. Now it's an experimental material. This was never, ever, ever developed. I've wondered about this for three decades until last year and now I think this is good stuff. The black surface coating adding carbon black to that ceramic cement. I checked with the manufacturer. These materials are still available, although you have to ask for them by name. They're so obsolete. But they agreed with me that you could add a little carbon black to that and you could turn that paint black. That gets the 0.8 emissivity problem out of the way. Large panels held by reinforcing fabric solves the retention redundancy problem. You can put that bond or sealant in between the panels and you can put some kind of a bonding agent between the panel and the uh, spacecraft shell panel that it's mounted on. And these just become large panels that you just put up on the airframe, bolt in place. It's pretty easy. And like I said, the stuff is actually still available. There's some other materials that I haven't looked at that might even be better. It, it certainly deserves a look. And here's your trade-offs. This is kind of a readiness trade-off thing. Structurally tough, low density, large panels, non-ablative and yet very thin. Redundant retention. I got good ideas for everything in the development and there doesn't seem to be any showstoppers with this. That's aluminosilicate. The temperatures have to stay under 1290 centigrade, just like they did on the shuttle tile. Okay? 2350 Fahrenheit for you old American boys. That's the phase change temperature. This stuff melts at about 3300 Fahrenheit, or I think that's about 1790 C. 
it's still experimental. These are the only two downsides I could see over here. I don't think it would take that long to develop it. I don't think it would take that much money. I sure would like to see something you could fly back from orbit on Mars 10,000 times if you wanted to. Let's see. So I think it's worthy of development. Like I said, I don't see any show stoppers. I got some pretty good ideas for all the shortfalls. The basic idea here is anybody interested? Can I get anybody interested in this? You are looking at the only man who has ever made this stuff. And there's my contact data. We got questions? The way I did it before, wrapping around that mandrel and sticking it in that mold, I put all the layers on it. I put them on one at a time. Just a trowel on a layer of the potting compound, put on a layer of fabric, another layer of potting compound, another layer of fabric, but I cooked it all at once. I believe that part of the low density I got, which is a little lower than you'd usually get with that potting compound, is because it did cook it at higher than the boiling point. And because it's confined, I think the steam had to wormhole its way out of here, and that, uh, that's part of what gave it the low density. And once you have that, you got a fluffy, permeable surface material. So you get that ceramic cement out, you get your paintbrush out, you just paint that on there, and put it back in that oven, and cook it again. It's that simple. And that temperature, that's quite compatible with all the aluminum alloys I know. You could make shell panels out of aluminum and protect them for re-entry with this stuff just like they did the sides and back side of the shuttle I never did actually measure it but I think it's in the neighborhood of 0.03 specific gravity it's similar to commercial styrofoam when I handled the parts they felt like styrofoam it's very light Uh, d it depends on what you're using it for as to what's a failure mode, but uh, I would think for a reentry heat shield, you wouldn't want a crack to appear in the surface because the aerodynamics might tear at that with aerodynamical forces. That being the case, you don't want the surface temperature to exceed the phase change temperature, which is that 1290 C. You can heat it up and you can cool it back down, and as long as you don't exceed that temperature, it doesn't crack. You go above that temperature, when you cool it down, it embrittles and it does crack. And my little ramjet, that wasn't a problem. For a re-entry heat shield with uh, very high wind loads on it, shear loads, you've got a problem if you let it crack, I think. I'd be worried about that anyway. That's a good question. I wanted to, but I couldn't get a sample of fire curtain cloth in time to order the materials and, get, and, and build one. I wished I had one. I, uh, it's amazing stuff, very light. Well, I had a density figure up there that looked about like 0.03 for the specific gravity, and I looked up Pika X, the low density ablative, the other day, and they had that listed as 0.27. So I'm lighter than Pika X. I'm heavier than NASA shuttle tile. We're in between somewhere. Their test facility is six miles from my front porch. <laughs> I wouldn't put uh, 
heavy pressure on it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it as a structural member. I would support it with a piece of structure, like, like you know, have it clamped down and bonded to a, a piece of shell plating that you're going to bolt on the airframe anyway. It's brittle, just like the shuttle tile was, except mine's not as brittle as theirs was. And if it, even if it cracks, you've got that fabric in there to kind of hold it together. If it cracks, you'll get back. You just get back one time like that. But uh, it's uh, low density is weak compared to metals or wood or anything we're familiar with on day to day basis. Uh, the shuttle tile was pretty fragile. It was uh, if you hit it and it cracked, the pieces would depart. And what I've dreamed up here is a way to keep the pieces from having such a tendency to depart and being a little bit more resistant to impact. It was impact and oscillating pressures that I was trying to fight so long ago. And I, I, got, I got that problem solved. Uh, the shuttle had uh, oddly, uniquely shaped tiles. Is that a problem with this? No, I don't think so, but I don't need to make six inch tiles. You could make panels with dimensions in meters if you wanted to. You just need a big oven. Guys that made rocket motors out of solid propellant had ovens like that. They're as big as this room. We'd cook them 500 at a time in there. <laughs> Maybe a thousand. Thank you very much.